Hi guys, welcome back to another episode of the Aussie Flipper. My name's Matt Diedrich and I am an online reseller. What that means is I will buy a product for the sole purpose of flipping it online for a profit. Now in today's episode, it's gonna be a good one. In today's episode, I wanted to go through what I think is the most important aspect to your online reselling journey. And that is the buying aspect, the buying side. I know we're online resellers, so we, we sell online, we sell, 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 but you've actually got to get that item to make that profit. So in today's episode, I wanted to give you my eight best tips for buying correctly to make you the most money when it's time to sell that item. So stick around, it's gonna be a great episode, let's get into it. So these tips are in no particular order. I think they're all equally as important as the rest. So make sure you stick around to the very end to make sure you're getting all eight tips. And if you're starting as a reseller for the very first time, um, these tips are gonna be great to set the scene and, and kick off with because they're all absolutely necessary to make you the most money in your, in your sales game. So in no particular order, I'll kick it off. The first one is always negotiate. So ask yourself the question right now, have you always negotiated on the purchase of, a, of an item. If you haven't done that, you need to start doing it because you're leaving profit on the table by just simply not asking for a cheaper price. People find it really tough to say no. So if you're coming in and saying, look, would you take $30 instead of $50? It's gonna be difficult for them to barter up and say, no, would you take 40 or 50? The chances are it'll either be 40 and you'll take it or they'll say yes to the 30. That right there between $30 and $50, that's your profit. That's your profit already. You haven't even listed it for the price that you know that it's worth. So it's really, really important that you're always making and putting money in your pocket by negotiating. Always ask for a cheaper price point and then that will only add to the overall profit. If you're not doing it, you need to do it. If it's an item you think doesn't need to be reduced and it's already an item that you think is perfectly priced, it's ridiculously low, that I, I think you should just simply just strike and don't waste time and potentially lose the purchase. If it's a Facebook Marketplace item and it's already really, really cheap, then I would just simply go ahead and just take it. But in most cases, you wanna be at least asking because the asking is very easy. They'll either say yes or no and you know the job's done. Just make sure you ask on every single purchase if you can do a cheaper price point. And that's even, that's Facebook Marketplace buying. That's even at the op shops. I mean, I know that they're already pretty low prices, but you can still go up to the cash register and ask if they can do a better price. Multiple times I've had them say, yeah, yeah, that's fine. And they'll take a few dollars off or whatever the case may be, you'll get a reduction in price. Second tip I have for you is my 50-50 strategy. So what I mean by that is when I'm going to buy an item, I will look at it and say, can I make double my money? So ultimately when I sell the product, 50% is the purchase price and 50% is the profit. So I'm always looking for that, that difference in, in price. So if I've done my research on an item and I see an item for $50, but I know it's worth $100, $120 in that vicinity, that's an item that I'll say, let's see if we can get it. If that item is only $75 to $80 and they're listing it at $50 for a purchase, I probably wouldn't do it because it doesn't equal my 50-50 strategy. What I tend to try and do is at a minimum have 50-50, but always try and obviously get a lot more because there'll be that negotiation process generally on your sale when it comes to you selling the item. And if you're only just at that 50% margin, it could creep down a little bit that's why I like to give myself the buffer of the 50-50 strategy because it might end up being 40% profit or 30% profit. And in most cases, that's okay. But when you're getting an item for say $50 and you're reselling it for $65, to me, that's not, that's, that's, it, it's, I think there's time better well spent elsewhere. So make sure it's a 50-50 scenario where you've researched, you can see you can at least double your money. And then when you put it up at double the price, hopefully it falls around that price on your, on your resale, which it should because that's what the research is there for. So always stick or think about a 50-50 strategy. It's worked for me. I always find that I get a larger profit when I choose the item I know I can get double the price on. Um, and it generally ends up falling on a, on a sale price around that mark anyway. So don't fall too short and take small profits. Take the big profits by working on the 50-50 strategy. 
The next one I've got to is similar to that 50-50 strategy and that's don't sweat the small stuff. Now I don't mean the small stuff in the sense of that $20, $30 or 20 to 30% profit. I'm more talking about the actual dollar amount. So I don't like to take an, a, a profit of at least $20 or less. To me, that's just not worth it. If I'm buying a coffee mug for $5 and I'm selling it for $10, I don't think I need to worry about that. I think I need to play with bigger items that I can get bigger returns on. And the efficiency of time throughout my week can certainly be, I guess, improved because I'm buying an item, I'm investing my time and energy into purchasing it, listing it, and going through the process like I would with any other item, but this will at least get me a minimum of $20 or more in profit. So I always have a $20 profit minimum. I always make sure that the item that I'm buying, will it make me at least $20? And if so, that would at least need to be purchased for $10 because that's my 50-50 strategy coming into play again. So I always work on not sweating the small stuff. Pick an item you'll at least make $20 or more on and make sure it's within the 50-50 strategy. The next one I've got for you is a way of reducing your per item purchase price. Um, so the way I would do that is to buy bulk. And I really think it's a great strategy that a lot of people can do because they obviously as full-time resellers or part-time resellers, you need a lot of inventory. So the best way I'd do that is to go into a thrift store or an op shop or whatever the case may be, even on Facebook Marketplace at somebody's home that might be selling a lot of things. Um, garage sales, obviously another one as well. Try and round up a heap of items that you want to ultimately purchase and then go and negotiate because you've bought or, or looking to buy a lot of products. That's a great way for them to say, well, look, geez, you're buying a lot off me. I'll, I'll cut the price down for you. When they do that, you then count up your number of items and you look at the individual cost per item and it will have dropped significantly in most cases. So it's not a tried and true um, you know, way of always going out and, and working for you, but I think it's a really good tactic to try and save a few extra dollars. And ultimately, a lower cost per item will mean a, a larger profit for you at the end of the day. So if you can find bulk items and, and buy a number of them, ask for a cheaper price in your negotiation because you're buying bulk and you'll generally get a pretty good result out of that and you'll be able to make a few extra dollars. The next one I've got for you is pay attention to the seasons, summer, winter. It's actually a crucial aspect to the sales game on, on picking which item you wanna buy. You know, I think it's a really good idea in the summertime to buy your winter gear and in your winter time to buy your summer gear because you'll get it at a really cheap price in the off season. And then when it comes time, if you can hold it at your property or, or keep it somewhere safe, when the time comes that it becomes in season, it'll be more valued. And you've purchased, obviously, it's just like going out and buying clothes and, and you buy your winter clothes in the summertime and your summer clothes in the winter time. I would do that with other items like water sports is a perfect one. You know, you can buy all your water sports in the winter and then you come to sell them in the summer when they want to be used. You'll make more money doing it that way and you'll initially have probably bought the product at a cheaper price because that person's trying to get rid of it in a time that's off peak season. So really pay attention to what you're buying when you're buying during different times of the year. Another one is always bring change upon the pickup of the item that you've agreed to buy. Now, whether that's at an op shop or whether that's at a Facebook marketplace purchase or a garage sale, whatever the case is, always have change. Don't, if it's an item that you're buying, say on Facebook marketplace and it's $50, don't go to the house with a crisp $50 note, ready to just simply hand it over. And there's a few reasons why you shouldn't do that. One of the main reasons is the item they may have more items. So coming into that bulk strategy idea, you could be saying, well, I've got a few extra dollars in my pocket. What else have you got that I could buy? So that's a great way of having a few extra dollars in your pocket for benefit. The other one is the item might not be exactly what you thought it might have been. So there might be a damage or a mark or you, you might want to negotiate a cheaper price point. If you've got smaller increments of money, you can simply just say, hey, would you take 40 instead of 50? Um, so it's a really good way to, I guess, just be on the lookout and be ready for opportunities to save some money if need be with loose change. And the last tip that I've probably got for you is look past the imperfections. So what I mean by that is look past the imperfections of the ad, because a lot of people will throw up horrible ads on, on Facebook Marketplace. So not so much when you're in store, but more just when you're online, you're trying to buy an item on Marketplace, which I try and do quite a bit because I think people put up such terrible titles, descriptions, sometimes never a description at all, and they put up horrible photos as well. And a lot of people will tend to dismiss those item descriptions and, and those, those listings, 
but I actually really try and pay most attention to those listings because I know that there's a chance that it is actually a quality item, just really poorly advertised. So I'll always pay attention to that and I think it's a great way that you can find a really good item and, and even try and have confidence to lower the price based on the poor listing they've developed. The other one is when you're in the shops, um, you know, the op shops, your thrift stores, um, a really good idea is to, even if there's a stain or a smudge on the t-shirt or, or the shoe's slightly damaged in some way, or you're picking up a piece of furniture and the furniture's got some paint marks on them, really look past those imperfections and just think, well, if I put a little bit of time and effort into giving them a quick clean or a scrub, or I did a little bit of paint work, you actually might find that it is actually truly worth what is the resale, true resale value, by just putting a touch of work in. Often what that will mean is you'll actually be able to buy the product at a cheaper price because there's a tiny bit of damage to it, but you know that you can see past that and you can fix that. So again, a crucial aspect, don't or at least see past the imperfections because generally there's some hidden gems under the, uh, under the mess that you might see, whether it be an ad or the actual item itself. So they are my really quick eight tips of buying success. Um, so the eight tips for buying success, I think it's really, really important that you guys at least have those key points in mind when you're out there trying to buy an item because you know, a lot of times people will see an item, they'll go, geez, they're asking $50, I'll, I'll be polite and I'll just take it for $50. And I just think that that's shooting yourself in the foot because you are ultimately out there to make dollars off your purchasing. So it's really crucial that you have those steps in play to make sure you're doing the full most, uh, taking the full most advantage of, of what you need to, to get the job done. Um, guys, remember to give this video a like and a subscribe if you've enjoyed it. Uh, we've just hit 100 subscribers, which I'm excited about. I'm super excited after uh, only about four or five weeks in the game on YouTube. We've been able to hit 100 subscribers, so that's been uh, really exciting for me. I'm, I'm stoked about that. Um, so give this one a like and a subscribe, and uh, hopefully I'll catch you in the next episode on Sunday where I'll do a what sold video uh, to show you how my week's gone so far. Thanks for watching, guys. See you later. Bye.